In today's video, you will learn how to connect Power Automate Desktop to Microsoft Excel. If this is the first time you connect Power Automate with Excel, this is an excellent video to start with. Today, we run a pizza restaurant and we're going to process customers' orders. A robot is going to calculate how much each customer needs to pay. And here you see the robot that you're going to build in the next couple of minutes. My name is Thomas and you're watching Tom's Tech Academy. Let's start right away. So let's start with building this flow in Power Automate Desktop. The Excel file that I'm going to use is this one, pizzasales.xlsx. So you see in the first column we have client names. Then we have the amount of pepperoni pizzas that someone has ordered. Then we have the amount of uh, formaggio pizzas, so cheese pizzas that someone ordered. And then we have the total amount to pay. What we want Power Automate Desktop to do is to calculate the total amount that someone has to pay. So we can do this by multiplying the amount of pepperonis with the pepperoni price and multiplying the amount of formaggio pizzas with the formaggio price. And then we get the total amount. Let's open Power Automate and let's start right away. So in Power Automate Desktop, let's uh, explode the Excel activities and see which activities we can use in our flow. The first activity that we're going to need is the launch Excel activity. So I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to drag it to my flow. You can either start with a blank document, but what we want to do is we want to open an already existing document. So select and open the following document. And now we have to show Power Automate which document we want to use. Click here on the file icon. Then let's navigate to my desktop and let's select the pizza sales document. If you want to build this flow together with me, which I highly recommend because this way you learn the most, you can find the link to this document in the description of this video. Let's select it, open it. Then we can choose whether we want the Excel instance to be visible or not. You can also turn it off, but for now I'm just going to keep it on visible and I'm going to save this activity. Then the next step, we want to show Power Automate which sheet it has to use in Excel. And the sheet is referring to this thing. So it's called orders. I'm just going to copy the name and that way I'm 100% sure that I have the correct name. So let's go back to Power Automate and then let's select the set active Excel worksheet activity. Let's put it here. Then you see that Power Automate automatically creates a variable which is called Excel instance. And this is the instance that you can refer to later. And the reason why Power Automate puts this in a variable is if you want to use multiple Excel files, you can refer to this variable and show Power Automate that this is the Excel file that you want to use. Then you can select the active worksheet either by index, so saying one, two, three, or four, or even better by name. So I'm just going to drop orders here and then Power Automate knows which sheet I want to use. Click on save. Then the next activity that I want to use is read from Excel. And that's this one. So drop it here. And then you see here that Power Automate is referring to the instance, and this is the instance that we have created. Now you can retrieve the value of a single cell, but what I'm going to do is retrieve the value of a range of cells. The starting column, that's the first column, because logically I want to start with the first column. My starting row is as well, one. And then let's see, my starting column is, so this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth one. So let's show Power Automate that we want to end at column four. And now we get a bit of a tricky question and that's uh, which row do you want Power Automate to end? And this is tricky because uh, normally Excel sheets are dynamic. So if today you have five rows and tomorrow you maybe have 10, um, if you hard code five here, you your Power Automate desktop flow is not gonna work anymore. Um, so I'm just gonna put zero here and then I'm gonna show you a trick on how to make this value more dynamic. Go to advanced and then you see your get first free row on column of the active worksheet. Put this one here on top. And let's define a column. I'm just going to say column one. And you see variables produced is first free row on column. I'm going to click save here. And then I'm going to go back to read from Excel worksheet. And here I'm going to select end row. So replace the zero with the first free row on column. Select it. So if you have 10 rows, your first free row is going to be 11. So you have to subtract one and you can do this by putting minus one and you have to do that before the percentage sign, otherwise it's not going to work. Then before clicking on save, we still have to do one thing, go to advanced 
And then make sure that you select first line of range contains column names. That will make sure that Power Automate will skip the first row and that it uses the names in the first row as references. So click save. And then you see that the variable that has been produced by the read from Excel worksheet is Excel data. And we're going to use that variable uh, to loop through. So for that, I'm going to use the for each. So this one, so search for the for each activity, take it and that, then drag it to below the read from Excel worksheet. The value that we want to iterate through, that's Excel data, select it and then click save. Then there is one more thing that we need to do. You see here that we have launched Excel. And if we launch Excel, we have to close it as well. So search for the close. Excel activity, this one, and drag it to below the for each. And the instance that we want to close is Excel instance, and we want to make sure that we as well save this document. So select save document and click save. Okay, let's close the Excel file and let's just try whether what we have built until now works. So let's close the file and let's run a bot. Okay, you see that our bot has looped 12 times. We didn't get any error, so until now, we are good. Let's continue with the next activity. And the next activity that I'm gonna use is Write to Excel Worksheet. So search for Write to Excel Worksheet and put it in the for each. We want to use the Excel instance that we have already declared earlier. Value to write, I'm just gonna put one here. And the write mode is that we want to write to a specific cell. The column is column four, because that one is referring to the fourth column. You can as well, by the way, put the name of the column here. And the row is referring, I'm just gonna put one here because I'm gonna show you a trick how to change this row. And for that, I'm gonna use set variable. And before the for each, I'm gonna declare set variable. I'm gonna say that this one is counter and the value is two. And that's because we're going to start with the second row in Excel and then add another set variable and do that below. So at the end of the for each, but still in the for each. And here I'm going to say that counter is equal to counter. And then make sure that you put B40 percentage sign plus one. So that way we can track the current row that we are processing. Click save. Let's go back to write to Excel worksheet. And then let's say that we want to write not to column one, because then we write all the time to the same Excel cell, right? Column four, row one. So let's make the row dynamic by making it refer to counter and save. Okay, let's just run a bot again and see whether what we have built until now is still working. Run it. Okay, let's open the Excel file. I see now in total amount to pay, we have written every time one. So let's remove this. Save the file and let's go back to Power Automate. The tricky thing with Power Automate is that everything you write in Excel, Power Automate will always read it as a text. And if you want to avoid that, you have to tell Power Automate that something is not a text, but a number. So I'm going to search for convert convert text to number. That's the one that I need. So I drag it into your for each. And then the text that we want to convert, this one is referring to current item. Click select, and then let me make sure that I'm selecting the right column. So the name of the first column is pepperoni. So I'm just gonna copy that. And I'm gonna put here between square brackets. And I use single quotation marks. And then I'm gonna put there the name of the column, which is pepperoni. We'll see that UiPath will save this as text as number and I'm gonna change this variable. So click here and then change it to amount pepperoni. Click save. Then I'm gonna add another text to number for the other pizza. And the other pizza that's for Majo. So I'm gonna copy this one as well. Go back to Power Automate. I'm gonna select current item and I'm going to change this one. So use again square brackets, single quotation signs, and put here for my Joe. And the variable that is produced, let's change this one to amount for my Joe. Click save. Okay, let's now create one more variable. So search for set variable. And that's where we're going to do the calculation of the amount. 
So make sure to put this between the convert text to number and the write to Excel worksheet. To pay is equal to amount from Majo. Select it. And I'm going to say that a pizza from Majo costs 7 euro. So multiply, use the star sign for that by 7. And then I'm going to say plus amount underscore pepperoni and then let's say that pepperoni pizza cost nine euro like this so now you should have the following amount from Majo multiplied by seven plus amount pepperoni multiplied by nine and you should only have percentage size at the beginning and at the end of this entire string click save let's go back to write to excel worksheet and let's not write one but let's write the variable that we have just declared which is to pay. Select it and click on save. This is our entire bot. So let's close the Excel file and let's see if our bot works. Let's open the Excel file again. Okay, and you see that Elmer only ordered one pizza from Maggio, which is seven euro. You see that the result is seven euro. And you see that Angela ordered um, two pepperonis, which are nine euro, and she has to pay 18 euro. So it looks like this data is correct. I hope this video was useful for you. I am aware that some of the calculations that we have done, you can also do in Excel. But if you do everything in Excel, of course, you will not learn Power Automate. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.